Fight Knives. I'm your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. With me tonight is Alex Tissot of YouTube's Alex's Knife Box. Coming up, should plastic knives be legal? Foreign knives versus domestic knives. Where does Russia fit in? And which is the better EDC? Sabenza or paramilitary two? We slash it out in a little segment we call Knife Fight. All of this and much, much more on this inaugural edition of Thursday Night Knives. Join the conversation and comment with your opinions and questions. And remember, your thoughts are fuel for this engine, uh, so we want to hear from you. Uh, Jim is working his magic at the switcher behind the scenes. He may put your comment up on screen, and uh, he may give you a shout-out. We may give you a shout-out. So, Alex, what do you say we jump on in? All right, let's do this. Well, it's great to see you again. Great to talk to you again. Tell me what amazing knife you have in your pocket tonight. Ah, uh, uh, tonight is the next knife I'm going to be doing in my review. This is the Ziba S5. Uh, it is a collaboration with uh, Forge and Fire ABS Master Smith Jason Knight, and it's a uh, pretty cool little knife. If you guys look on the inside. Whoop. Can use this camera thing here. There is a whole bunch of skulls that are actually layered inside. Kind of look similar to these backspacer skulls you'll see right here. So nice little knife. Good action. It's a monster. Nine inches overall. Oh, so that's a four inch blade there. Yes. Okay. So right in my wheelhouse. And that's Jason Knight. He's known for his kukris. And you can kind of see that in both the blade shape and the handle shape. Yep. Let's see. Uh, tonight. Uh, what you got, Bob? I got my trusty old Emerson CQC 13. Yes. The, uh, one of the few knives I can tolerate a serrated blade. And I have something else to show you in a minute, Alex. Uh, and then also my uh my gec number 15 boys knife it's a great little just throw in your pocket you don't even need a sleeve for this and uh it rattles around in there with my uh my little pen and uh yeah it's a great little knife nice. I love it. But, uh recently i just i wanted to show you this i mentioned this on the phone to you the other night i got this uh the microtech lcc there you go I got it on Blade Forums, and uh, man, I saw it up there. I'm, I'm, I'm on a little bit of a Microtech kick. I recently got this double-edged and serrated, and uh, also got this uh, this little guy, but this was kind of an accident. But uh, yeah, I got this beautiful LCC. It's a, it's a dual-action knife, which means a little flick of the bolster, and the knife pops out like that. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, man, I'm very, uh, I'm very psyched to have found it. I didn't know I was looking for it, and then there it was, and uh, I had to have it. So that's a uh, Greg Lightfoot, right? Yeah, that's right, Greg Lightfoot, and uh, he's the he's the maker of my one and only so far custom folder. So uh, when I saw that, I, I had an eye for the Lightfoot, and I had to grab it. Yeah, good grab, man. That's a rare yeah. one, though. Well, what do you got coming in? I know you've got a couple of couple of things uh, in the works. So uh, if you guys subscribe to um, Sharp by Design on uh, Instagram, you'll see uh, a little peek of my new dagger. Just got finished. And um, I got uh, a Medina Custom that's just about to be finished, hopefully pretty soon. A Russian knife uh, from a less known knife maker. And um, what else? There's one more I forgot. <laughs> well that's a that's a great position to be in man to not even remember what you have coming in yeah they're just going in and out you know yeah we just got a comment from edwin callow saying bowie goodness and uh i have to i have to say yes to that and right now i'm saying bowie but i never know if i should say buoy or not so uh right now it's bowie bowie I'm goodness gonna, on the cqc 13 i'm gonna say buoy 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 is that uh, French? It could be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit tonight uh, with you and kind of get your opinion uh, about the plastic knife thing and the New York State banning plastic knives. This came up in the podcast recently with uh, Jim 
Yeah, and Jim and I were kind of bantering on it, and uh, we 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 found ourselves at odds on this subject. And I have to admit that I never actually put uh, any nuance in my thinking. I, I hadn't actually put much thought into it. I just knew that I'm for plastic knives. I'm for all knives, you know, no exceptions. And um, I have to say, in my conversation with Jim, he had some interesting points. And uh, so I'm, I'm just curious, how do you feel about it? This, uh, you know what I'm talking about, these knives that are not detectable by uh, metal detectors. Well, uh, I'll be truthful with you. I mean, in all honesty, I, you know, you could kill somebody with a plastic spoon if you really wanted to, right? Like the guys do in prison. Right. Um, so for me, as far as, you know, it's always down to who's the person that is holding that object. Um, so me personally, with anybody can go over the counter and buy a pistol. I don't see a problem with it. Um, but you know, people have bad intentions, do bad things. So I can understand or understand why people could be skeptical about something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but on the same token, uh, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, my, my, uh, what I said to Jim was, well, anyone could walk into Home Depot and buy a hatchet or a hammer and go do the same damage. And he said, yeah, but they can't get into a courtroom with it. And I thought, hmm, that's an interesting point that I hadn't quite considered. Uh, I'm not going to allow that to change my mind, was my initial thinking. And, and, and actually, in reviewing, it, it has not changed my thinking. But I, I got to say, it made me uh, sensitive to the argument anyway. Um, but It's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. It is a good point, but again, it's it's all in the intention and the person who's got the object in their possession. And um, you know, um, I I kind of see Jim's point as well too. However, um, I don't think they should be banned or made illegal. Yeah, and and I sense a, a, a slippery slope with it too. Okay, first it's plastic knives, then it's you know. Certain knives. kind of, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's headed. Uh, knife registration, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, it, it leads to such insanity as we've seen in um, in the UK recently, where the Church of England wants to ban points on the tips of uh, uh, cooking knives, just regular everyday kitchen knives that you buy at Tesco's or wh wherever they shop, you know, and. Uh, to me, that's just, God, that's a, a desperate, that's a desperate, that's a desperate strategy. I mean, they obviously have a violence problem there. Yeah. Is it, is it a knife problem? I don't know. Some people argue that it's a gun problem because people don't have guns to defend themselves with that they resorted to knife fighting. And um, that's a very American way to think, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I see some of you down below said, what about ceramic knives? Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the same principle as a plastic knife, is it not? Yeah, I think I think it is. Uh, it's, it's something that you can make sharp. However, I think, well, ceramic knives uh, have sweet, you know, you can get a, a crazy edge on a ceramic knife, but it's brittle. Right. And probably wouldn't stand to defensive thrusting, whereas, oh, listen to me, uh, I don't know. but, but, uh, but the plastic knives, I know, like admittedly by uh, Lynn Thompson, uh, these plastic knives are meant for, you know, last ditch defensive uh, efforts. And then, you know, they're not meant to go out into the field and do work. They're right. meant to, you know, stab a guy when you're, when you're getting jumped in the shower. And yes, that is crazy. But I, I have a I have one of these uh, cold steel karambits in my shower, and it's partially because I've seen too many movies, and partially because I like <laughs> knives, and it's a great excuse to, you know. Uh, you, you know, know but what? I, mean, I give you all the respect for that, man. I have nothing <laughs> against that. You you got the uh, you know the fedora hanging right there, and you got the karambit for, <laughs> right next to it. Well, it's it's right below the shampoo. You know, I'm like. Oh, well, where, where am I the most vulnerable? I'm, I'm set up in the rest of the house where I can reach out and grab a knife. That's how it's always been in all of my living spaces. So, uh, so why not in the shower? So, uh, basically, uh, you know, I, 
I think I'm a little more, as I said before, sensitive to the kind of arguments that Jim brings up and, and maybe my, my thoughts would swing, uh, if I had a personal experience, uh, you know, came too close to them in a serious way, maybe I'd feel differently, but you know, I, I, I tend towards the American argument, as you said, uh, maybe it's a, a violence problem. Maybe it's a, Maybe it's a lack of gun problem or whatever. But don't the guys in the courtroom, cops are packing in there anyways? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. There's so. a, it, in our municipality, there's a very, very tight sheriff's office. I mean, they, they know what they're doing. Uh, Bob would have a shower in. Yes, he <laughs> would. would have <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. He would have one of those. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I would. And I do, but uh, you know they they are pleasing. It is pleasing to drop seven bucks and get something that's injected, molded, and very cool like this. But uh, but yeah. Anyway, so uh, let me ask you uh, about your collection. I want to shift gears. I want to ask you about your collection because I have some changes going on in my collecting, not only habits but my my instincts. I feel like they're changing, and I feel like I've been watching yours evolve as well through your Instagram channel. Where do you see your collection heading? Wow. I, I really have no idea, man. I just, um, the whole idea was always for my collection to have everything from a budget knife to nice full custom and just kind of experience a little bit of everything. Lately, I've been buying a lot of high end, uh, man, it's, you know, it wears down on you when you, blow so much cash <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh god three knives this month what in the world and none of them are cheap right so when at the beginning of my collecting i want to say i had a lot more fun with little production knives and such because it's like ah uh, you know a couple hundred bucks doesn't hurt um but then you know that dagger was almost 1800 bucks and that hurts yeah, that does, um, and and also like uh, thinking about what the what the purpose of each one of them is. I mean, because when you have a collection like yours, and you're um, not only buying high end custom knives, but you are having them customized by the maker. What was that material? That crazy inlay material on your uh, on your Brian Nadeau dagger? And your oh, uh, it's uh, it's called Uranium Raffira Noble. <laughs> Say that again. Uranium. It's three words. Rafira Noble. Rafira Noble. R A F F I R N O B L E. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jim says, I don't know. What? <laughs> so what? What is this stuff? It's a it's a composite material, and it's got a mesh of um, copper and brass inside of it, and uh, the uranium version is. Uh, when you put it in the sunlight, it glows super bright. And you can actually see that on Brian Nadeau's website or on his Instagram. He posted it of of the knife in the dark. And it, it, you can't see the, the knife, so it's kind of a tease. All you can see is the glowing, you know, scale piece, which is kind of cool. It's uh, <laughs> Edwin Callow says, what is that, Alex? Sounds like cancer. If uh, if. For some reason, you don't see any more sharp by design knives getting made, <laughs> and uh, he somehow contracts uh, radiation poisoning. It's my fault. Yeah, it wasn't me. Didn't do it. <laughs> Didn't do it. <laughs> well, I was thinking uh, after you, you know, I texted you. What is that material? You sent that back, and I was like, man, that's like. It sounded like getting yellow cake uranium, you know, inlaid mm -hmm. in your inlaid in your knife. It's like, you know. Just beyond it, probably a spoonful weighs a ton, as they say. Well, I I ordered it from Germany. There's a place in Germany that sells it, and uh, it took almost like three months to get it to me. Um, but they, I I don't even remember what I ran into uh, one day to find it, but I saw just a guy playing with the block of it. Mm -hmm. um, the manufacturer was posting this video on YouTube. I'm like, holy crap. I got to get this stuff. So I bought it. It's been in my box probably for almost a year. 
I mean, even I, I never decided what to do with it, but I'm like, I know I want that material and do something cool with it. Uh, and I think I picked the right knife for it. Uh, to me, that is my, uh, something about that knife has, it, it's got perfect pr proportions. It's like that Da Vinci, what is it called? The, the something man, uh, Vitruvian man. It's him. Mm -hmm. It's, it's man spread out like that in the circle yeah. and the squares and all the proportions. It's, right. it's got that level of perfection to my eye. It's got perfect, um, handle to blade ratio, you know, size speaking. It's, it's, it's got that, that danger factor because it's a folding double-edged knife, which I like. Yep. And uh, it looks like you could probably wave it out of your pocket too with those quillions sticking out. Um, mm, I'm probably oh, not going to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't want to have it slip out of your hand and land face first on the pavement. Or open partially in my pocket and stab myself in the thigh. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah, there's that. There's that. I put up a, uh, I, I put up a, a collection selection video of my new ultra tech, which is a double edge and it's got serrations and someone, I, I have a sneaking suspicion from across the pond said, um, I like it, but I wouldn't want to keep it in my pocket next to me, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I By the way, that, that, that combination you got with the, uh, the combo edge top and mm -hmm. bottom, that is the coolest combo. I got to agree with you. I mean, there, I, I'm not always a serration guy, but I like fully serrated cold steels when they're the crazy shaped blades. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm really loving the uh, the Microtech serrations. They're they're really uh, like this is got beautiful gnarly serrations. I love them. Yep. Well, and uh, then and on on that OTF, you have the best of both worlds. You have a full cutting straight edge, and you got a full serrated edge. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's e even more to the point. Um, I have yet to to see this as a utility blade yet because it's brand new. I haven't gotten over the the John Wick factor yet. You know, I'm like putting it in my sock and pulling it out. <laughs> of course, only at home. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty slick. And then this other this uh, I bought this Troodon, this little three inch Troodon, which has the same blade setup. I got this from a guy on Blade Forums. Been doing a lot of buying and selling on Blade Forums and have had wonderful experiences. Got this. It's got a couple of issues. Um, but the funny thing is, is I was in such a, uh, I don't know, lustful fit to get a, a combat Troodon, a four inch version, that when I saw this listed and I saw the price and it was a price I wanted to pay for a combat Troodon, but it was unrealistic. I saw this and uh, I, my eyes filled in combat and I bought it and I showed up and I was like, where is it? It's, it's not the four inch <laughs> version, um, but uh, I'm falling in love with it. It's like a little, it, it is like a little jewel. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful little knife. And I, I think, you know, it's for my daughters when they get older, you know, and they have to, you know, fend off high school, you know, ruffians or whatever. Uh, of course, that's not going to happen, and and this isn't. I'm not going to. But that's my excuse for keeping it right now. It's like a a, a beautiful little little toy. That's awesome. I love yeah. that. So, do you think you're going towards the more luxurious in your tastes and in your in in what you're getting? And by luxurious, I mean exotic materials. And when are we going to see mammoth ivory in your collection? Um, I, that's been on my mind. Um, Mammoth is definitely something I've been chasing for for quite a while, but it's got to be on the right knife, you know. Um, it, Mammoth is not always good on everything, um, but I've noticed there's a quite a few South African knife makers that are doing a real good job with that stuff. So um, hopefully soon, that's probably one of the things I'm going to start playing with next is more natural materials versus synthetic. So you bring up the South African makers and one aspect, and, and I, I have to say, I think you're a bit of an inspiration for this, but one aspect of my recent uh, kind of outlook on collecting knives is veering back towards the, the, the U S made. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had, uh, I had a, a relatively big group of uh, fancy Chinese knives that I've culled down, uh, quite a bit. And, uh, um, I'm just feeling like those are cool and they're beautiful. And I'm going to, there are a couple that I'm going to keep for sure. And mm -hmm. uh, just kind of always keep. Um, but 
the rest of them can go. And I, I just kind of want to get back to um, what I was doing maybe a year ago, which was American made, you know, hinderers. I love hinderer knives. And now I'm getting into Microtex and it's kind of small batch production things and, and more tactical. I'm, I'm finding some of my fancier um, titanium frame lock flippers with amazing silky smooth action. Uh, a little fussy, not fussy like they're giving me problems, but fussy like precious. Mm -hmm. and, um, so I think instinctually I'm moving back to the more weapony, more utility, but still, you know, uh, nicely made and large and domestic. Uh, right. So I, I know that um, one of the first comments you ever left on one of my videos was, it's really nice, but yeah, I'm not so into the Chinese knives. Um, and, 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 and I respect that stance. And there are others, uh, there are other collectors that, that I'm aware of with similar stances. And I, and you, you know, know how much fire I get for that kind of attitude though. Well, I get lots of fire for that. People are like, you know what the, the Kaiser and the Ria and the, those are better production knives than anything anywhere else. And I don't disagree. It was, it's more of a personal taste thing. Right. Um, however, I'm a big, big fan of Riot knives. Um, I, I've held quite a few where I'm blown away by it, the level of uh, fit and finish. I do have one Wii knife, ma Wii manufactured knife. Which one? In my collection. It's a, um, it's, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Phonetic Edge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Phonetic Edge uh, designed a couple knives with Elisha Isham, and uh, I bought one of those that he designed. It's called the Omen, I think, is what it's called. It's got a deeply recurved Tanto esque blade. Uh, kind of. It's it's a little spear point ish, and, <laughs> and then uh, it, he just did this really crazy bright green anodization two tone with some polished. Uh, frame and then uh, he even had uh, adam purvis make a nice clip for me oh nice nice yeah it's a yeah. green zirka tie clip it looks really crazy i mean uh i want to get him on the podcast I, I have some questions to ask him seems like he's got an, an interesting trajectory uh, i wanted to get back to the, the so not chinese knives you're not like crazy about the chinese knives but i noticed you're crazy about the russian knives how does that uh, square? Uh, it's a personal preference. I mean, everybody knows Shira Goroff. Um, I'm a big fan of those. Um, and I found a few, I've actually interacted with a few less well-known uh, knife makers from Russia um, that have really put out some really cool looking stuff with some really high-end materials. At a reasonable price. I'm actually on the books for a couple more guys. I'll keep that under wraps because it's probably not going to be for a while. Uh, but I do. Um, I like what they're doing over there. Um, it's pre it's pretty impressive the way that they get and they don't look like other knives from around the world. Same thing kind of with South African knives. That's I'm kind of half Russian, half South African knife kick right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I just like knives that look different, you know. I I will agree with you, and I'm not sure what it is. And I I um, I can't say that I could necessarily identify a South African knife by sight, but I, I I feel like when I'm just doing my endless scroll on Instagram when I'm at work and something is uploading or downloading, and I see, I know immediately when I see a, a Russian knife. They have man, they just have a design sense that's very identifiable. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not sure what it is, but it's graceful and brutal simultaneously. Yes. Always. Uh, definitely. That's a good way to put it. Um, I like the Cherbikovs or the Shiro's have that really nice, sleek, stabby kind of look. Mm -hmm. So you um, sent me, uh, you sent me two pictures, uh, mm -hmm. the other day. What were they? Those the, were, the red uh, carbon fiber and the, and then the blue, uh, clip point. So yeah, this guy, this guy, he, he goes by Mechanic Knives on Instagram, and um, I ran into him by talking to another Russian knife maker. I just happened to click on his um, on his Instagram, and I saw a couple knives that he did, and um, 
I saw S125. It's a steel I've really wanted to have some experience with. Um, so I reached out to him, asked him uh, how much to build a knife. The price was unbelievable. I'll let you guys contact him and find out for yourself. Unbelievably high or low? Unbelievably low. There you go. And um, I really suggest you guys check this guy out. I've had some of the best customer experience with this guy. Um, I, and I'll post some more. I have pictures of one of them up. The other one I haven't received yet. It's it's in it's on its way. So you, you have a lot of experience uh, just with working with knife makers to make the knife that you want. What what are the um, like? How important is personability i mean or i guess good customer service obviously that's important but i mean how, how how does it how does it work do you vibe with a knife maker and 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 arrive at something together or uh you know so each knife maker that i've dealt with has been a different story <laughs> and you know obviously personality i i'm in customer service for a living so for me, customer service is paramount. Uh, but I've dealt with some not pleasant knife makers who make great product, and I'm not going to name any, but um, you've probably heard their name before. And, um, you know, not everybody's uh, talents is dealing with people. So I kind of, you know, I, I feel them out. I try to be gentle about my approach. I don't try to force anything. And if, a, if I tell a knife maker that I want a certain style knife built and with certain materials. And if they have like difference of opinion and want to do it a little bit more their way, I try to allow them to be part of the project. And I also ask them, well, what would you like on this knife? You know, mm -hmm. if this is a knife that you're building for yourself, I like to like, like include them in like we're collaborating together to like make this project together so that he gets to express what he wants out of the knife and i get to have my own personal touch and be a part of that collaboration right like he has the valuable experience of creating the thing and uh and you you get the thing <laughs> which is great right. Right. Uh, well, so how is it working how is it working with russian makers and do you think that the Russian production knives, uh, like, well, wait, are is Custom Knife Factory? Are those are those made in China? So they have a CNC machine uh, shop in China. They get parts uh, CNC cut out there. I'm not sure the whole specifics of it. All the parts, loose parts, get sent back to Russia, and Russia does some of their own. Uh, stuff they do all the assembling they do all the customizing and all the finish work themselves so that's kind of how i understand uh custom knife factory works but i would consider them more of like a production you know? right right okay so how do they stack up against all these big chinese production companies they're killing it this year man they're killing it um if you guys have held anything made from custom knife factory in the past two three years um they've always been great and uh, but this year especially they're they're they've really stepped up their game a lot and whether you like the way they look or not or if it's too large or not the design cue you like when you open and close these things like you cannot deny it's a fantastically built knife <sighs> I have to get my feet wet with them. There's one, there's one Russian knife. Uh, well, there's one uh, custom knife factory knife that I have always had my eye on and I can never remember the name. It's like Aleutian or something, but it's, uh, it's got a nail neck and it's a big uh, clip point blade. It kind of looks like a, like a traditional knife. Um, do you know what I've, I'm talking about, Alex? I know the exact model you're talking about. What is and, that? Uh, I, the name skips from me. I thought it started with an M. I can't I, I, remember exactly, but I could probably look it up real quick. But I've heard, I know I have a coworker that has one of those. Oh, really? And he said very good things about it. 
God, I, yeah, I love that knife. And there's a new knife out uh, by Lion Steel called the Gitano. I mentioned it on the podcast the other day. But to me, that knife is, uh, I mean, to me, that's an outstandingly beautiful, modern, traditional kind of thing. It, it, yeah. it looks like a little, uh, it looks like a little Navaja with a big, broad um, clip point blade. And it's got that sort of horn handle shape and it's got a, cl a, a clip on it and everything. It's uh man, it's kind of the same vibe, you know, like modern and traditional. Love yep. It. Love it together. Except I don't like my proper so much. <laughs> proper, but I guess, you know. So that knife is called the CKF uh Makosha. Makosha. M A K O S H A. I don't know how you say that. But that's a that's actually a really good looking knife. So, uh, so after, after you get this, um, windfall of Russian knives that, that you've been, uh, having worked on, where do you, where do you see yourself headed next? I'm going to play a little bit more with South African knife makers. Mm -hmm. Um, and from there I've kind of touched all the avenues I want to. Um, I, I, there I'm, I'm, I'm going to be blind after that point. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going after that. Well, I, I think something might pop up. Something might pop up. It seems like the knife world is is like that. Uh, there's never any lack of. There's like no rest for me. I feel like. No. I get something. And I'm like, oh, I, I, you know, it's more desire, and uh, uh, they say desire is uh, suffering, and. Yeah. So, so uh, I I wanted to uh, I wanted to do a a little debate with you. All right. Uh, that's all right. And now I, I'm not sure I'm not sure which side to take, but this is debate for debate's sake. Um, I want to talk about yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the two most um, heralded EDC knives or that that jumped to mind: uh, the Sabenza and the Paramilitary too. And now I definitely have my preference in this case. Um, but it doesn't matter what my preference is. I want to be able to try and argue for, for either side here. So if anyone out there has any inkling as to who should uh, defend the Sabenza and who should defend the paramilitary, the first person to comment back will, will get it. And, and I'm, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to have this knife fight. <laughs> but, I, uh, own, I own both of those knives, too. Oh, nice. So, so you're OK. As so I'm familiar I, with both. So um, while we're waiting for this to come in, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit. You were talking about you're thinking South Africa is next. Um, yeah. What about the uh, what about the we produced Shamwari coming out? Gareth I refuse. <laughs> you refuse. Oh, why? I refuse. Why is that? Uh, so with the inflation of these Shamwaris that are out right now, mm -hmm. I mean, even friends of mine are just hitting me like in the face with prices. Um, as far as the secondary market. Oh, you mean like Alex want to buy my Shamwari for $250,000? Yeah. Yeah. I had a friend come up to me uh, or hit me up last week uh, before when I was actually paying off my dagger. And uh, he's like, hey, I have a three and a half inch Shamwari, which is a pretty hard one to find in that size. That's the bigger one. That's okay. the biggest one. Because they come in three, 3.3 3 and 3.5 inch. And uh, I'm like, well, he's like, I'll give you the homie hookup. I'm like, okay, what's the homie hookup on a, on a Shamwari? He's like, $1,800. Oh, my. I'm own. like, no thanks, buddy. Whoa. So. I thought you were my homie. Yeah. Damn. Sabenza Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so yeah, um, that being said, the uh, we produce Shamwari I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of uh, interesting that he's he he be, wants to be the only one that sells them, as in he is in Gareth Bull. Uh huh. Um, Zelrick but... says I'll defend neither. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Um, so I don't know. It's it's not a knife for me until it goes back to the seven eight hundred dollars that they used to be. 
Yeah, yeah. And I don't I want mean, a Wii produ produced one either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, when you're in the and and I'm not trying to be uh, I'm not trying to be one of those must be nice kind of guys, but when when you're in the rarefied air where you've gotten yourself to, you know, and you and you kind of step up with each with each knife. I mean, everyone kind of maybe does that, but you're you know you're you're collecting some really incredible things. Why why would you do that? I mean, you you would just hold out, you know, hold out for the for the stock market crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but yeah, I like that. We'll see what happens. All right, sir. So I will let you start in your defense of the Sabenza. Well, let's just say, so the Sabenza has been out for a very, very long time. And it's surprisingly has been the same knife all the way up from the 90s. I think actually from the 80s, right? I think it was 87 when the Sabenza came out. I could be wrong. Somebody can correct me down below. 30 years ago, I guess. Or yeah. Years ago. So, and it's been a knife that's been unchanged exactly the way it's been this entire time with marginal changes from maybe steels. I think they used to use ATS 34 before and stuff like that. Now they're using S35. Knives, the knife's been. I mean, designed uh, what the first frame lock, right? The re in integral lock. Um, the steel has been designed by Chris Reed. I mean, that knife has just been an iconic knife since the day it came out. Um, it's comfortable. It's fairly lightweight. I mean, it's not the lightest thing, but it's fairly light. Uh, it's got absolutely one of the most fantastic looking blades on it. It's got a hollow grind that is so high that thing will hold its thickness behind the edge maybe 15 20 sharpenings um it's crowned in every single corner um, you can get it in every color shape or form you can get it left-handed you can get it right-handed to me it's just the most versatile knife uh so i always will pick the sabenza well these are all staggeringly good points you raise um if you have 450 dollars to spend minimum on on one of these knives uh not all of us do must be nice no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> touche you know one might one might say that uh, not changing the knife over 20 years i know they had one major redesign in that period um one might say that's a lack of flexibility or a lack of um, paying attention to to uh, public um, public outcry, if you will. Uh, the paramilitary two is called the two because it's gone through two iterations. The first one, I believe, was a well. I don't remember if it was a backlock or not, but uh, the compression lock was designed for and originally on this knife. I can't remember which iteration. So that is an innovation there. And uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, in going through those two, cha uh, the change from the first one to the second one, the, uh, the blade handle to blade ratio was improved. The ergonomics were improved and, uh, and some other things were improved. So I, I think that uh, Spyderco's flexibility and responsiveness to the market is an important thing. Um, I think that it's full, fully flat ground, but pretty thin blade uh, is a is a great uh, um, <laughs> is a is a great performer. But you know what? You just cannot get this thing ambidextrously. Th <laughs> Thank you, Zelric. Um, it it is kind of a bear to close left handed. I have to say, I love um, you know I, I love being kind of ambidextrous with my knives. Uh, and the paramilitary too is lacking on that end, but I am defending that knife. So I will just continue to say it's affordable. It is rugged. It is lightweight. It is somewhat handsome. It is comfortable. It is fully flat ground. It has great steels with many different steels. You can get that in, whether it's a sprint run or an exclusive from a dealer, same thing with handles, uh, uh, handle materials and such, and there's a huge secondary market, uh, secondary market for it in terms of uh, pieces and selling it. So, taking that into consideration with price point, I would have to say that the paramilitary two by Spyderco is a superior EDC. 
I wish you believed what you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. You 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 put you put a Sabenza and a paramilitary two in front of you, and you tell me which one you're gonna pick up. All right. Well, now that this whole fiasco is over, I would say most definitely uh, I, I'm a I, I prefer the Sabenza uh, for sure. I love the way it feels. I mean, it's a solid. I mean, I, I do have a paramilitary two, uh, but only one. And I wasn't so in love with it that, that I sought out a better one. And I don't think this was maybe the best example. Like it, it had great action when I first got it and that deteriorated. And then no amount of uh you know, Nick Shabazz videos could could resurrect the the the, the action on this thing. So, <laughs> um, so I, I you know I still keep it, and I'll I'll probably always have it. Let my justification. I mean, the whole knife game to me is just a series, a cascading series of justifications. And my justification for that is, well, sometimes I make knife review videos, and. <laughs> Everybody knows that if sometimes you make knife review videos, you have to have a paramilitary on hand uh, for size comparisons, as if everyone in the world has one. If really, you, you could probably use as a leak or a buck 110 or something you can pick up at Walmart. If you actually see all my um, almost all my videos, I'm always referring to a PM2 for size. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's kind of the, the universal standard measurement. It's like it pulling is. out the yardstick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't deny actually the PM2 is a fantastic knife. Uh, it is. It comes in a gazillion different steels, um, and you know I just and now it's what coming out in a Tanto pretty soon and a couple what? other. Yeah, there's going to the be a Tanto. Craft? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm dead serious. Uh, they're going to be releasing God. a Tanto. They're going to be doing a couple other things with uh, the PM2. I mean, so, I, I, I hope they don't make it look too ugly because, you know, they do make ugly knives, beautifully ugly knives like E.T., you know, cute mm -hmm. and ugly at the same time. But yep. some, some of their knives are kind of awkward. And I'm trying to think of what that's going to look like. I, I have not seen pictures. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, you'll find it online. I, I actually like it. There's, uh, you know, people in the Spyderco knife groups on Facebook just – when that picture first leaked out, some people went crazy and said, oh, wow, that is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Some people said, I, I was one of those people that said, I actually like it. Um, would I buy it? Eh, you know, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do like a good Tanto. I, I mean, I love I love them. Uh, Edwin Callow asks, what is your hard use go-to folder? Alex? Mm, hard use go-to folder. Actually, <laughs> it's a PM2. Because <laughs> so the knife is so it. cheap. It, the <laughs> knife is so cheap that I don't care to beat it up. Um, yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me. You got me. <laughs> That's good. That's good. mine. Mine has been. Uh, mine has been. Well, if I'm painting inside the house, uh, it's it's the. Um, it's the Delica, not the Delica. I'm sorry, the Endura. Yeah. But uh, lately, and I'd say ever since I got it, it's been the AD10, the Cold Steel AD10. That's um, a cool knife. It is a cool knife, and and I got one of the first. Um, I guess it's the first run where where it was uh, hollow ground, and uh, I'm a sucker for a hollow grind, and it is thin and slicey, but on this giant beefy frame. So, yeah, Edwin, I'd say it was the uh, the AD10 for me. Have you seen that guy on Facebook who turns them into clip points? That oh my god, yes, I have. That was so I've cool. seen him on on Instagram, and the the funny thing is, is uh, ever since I got that knife, I've taken whenever I'm near like a round object, like say this roll of of tape, I would I would kind of like put it in front and obscure it and be like, this would make such a cool clip point. But I, I kind of don't feel like taking it out to the grinder and ruining it, or possibly ruining the heat treat and. Eh, eh, me. And then I see it go up. On, I'm like, I, that was my idea. I should have yeah. done that because yeah. it looked beautiful. It I looked love really it. cool. Yeah, it was yeah. only fifty bucks. He only charged fifty bucks. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh! I didn't even realize he was doing it for people. I, oh, I just yeah. thought it was just something he did for his own. Oh, very nice. 
Bob's like wheels are turning right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? If I'm going to, if I'm going to, someone's going to ruin the heat treat, I'll do it myself. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well said. No. Uh, speaking of which uh, I, I am now waiting for uh, I'm, I'm expecting it now. I mean, I haven't gotten an email, but I'm just based on, on uh, projected timelines. Um, my uh, hinderer XM 18 should be coming back sometime soon. It's a Spanto. And uh, I had uh, Josh from Razor's Edge uh, hollow grind it and make it nice and thin. And uh, I can't wait to get it. I can't wait to get oh, it man. back. Because that was always the my one kind of like, I wish this thing were a little, you know, more svelte like a, like a Sabenza. Yep, yep. Less wedge-like. Yep. And and Josh, if you guys haven't seen Josh from Raz Razor's Edge, uh, his work, he's phenomenal. He's one of the best modders out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, by far his, his regrinds are insane and then yeah. he does reblades which is yeah. uh, you know it's almost hilarious to me um you know uh hilarious meaning he, he'll take uh he, he he will reblade i've seen a bunch of these uh paramilitary too and put a blade on there that is like a thousand percent cooler than the original paramilitary mm -hmm. two blade it's some yeah. multifaceted recurve you know kind of kind of uh Hey, what's up, Thomas? Good to see you, man. <laughs> you know, some some sort of multifaceted, crazy recurve tanto thing sitting on a paramilitary two frame. You know, right. obviously, whoever did that loves the way that thing feels in hand. Yeah, just wanted a sick ass blade put on there. And yeah, man, he does beautiful work. I'm looking forward to uh, to getting this thing. You get you're talking about a guy reblading. There's another guy. I'm going to throw his name out there for the people listening. You guys need to check out Transparent Knives. Uh, Brian is a very talented new custom knife maker. Um, he's been reblading a lot of uh, Benchmade bug outs, which I know is going to be a, a hot thing. And he's got his own finish. He calls a cracked mirror finish. Uh, you guys can see that on his uh, Instagram. He actually rebladed a uh, my CRKT Pilar for my project. Oh. I so in case people don't know, uh, give give the brief download on your project. So I, I, I took uh, my podcast guys uh, that I do a podcast with uh, challenged me to do a video on a budget knife. They said <laughs> putting too much like stuff on there. We want to see some budget. So I had this uh, CRKT and S35VN version with carbon fiber scale. And um, I decided that I did a little review on it. Um, I went ahead and uh, decided I was going to do like a little disassembly mod video on it. And uh, it hasn't gone up yet because I'm doing a reblade on it. So um, the blade is actually made of uh, Vanadius 4. Some pretty what crazy what stuff. What planet did that originate on? It's some crazy stuff. So Brian is actually, uh, he's got an even heat, which is one of the best heat treat ovens out there. And uh, he's never played with this stuff before. Um, so he just did a heat treat on it. And uh, I'll send you a picture later uh, when we're yeah. done. Cool. Um, it looks really, really cool and some really crazy steel. So we'll, uh, video will be long, long time, but soon. Did you change the shape of the blade, or did you have uh, the um, did you have the exact shape carved out of that? So originally, we we're going to regrind the factory blade um, and just like thin it out, just for like a screaming edge. And um, then after that, um, I asked him, "I'm like, dude, you're reblading all kinds of knives. Let's put a cool steel on there." You know, so yeah. uh, so then he went ahead and got some steel. He's like, sent me a picture today, actually. And he's like, what do you think? I'm like, I think I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. he actually uh, posted it on his Instagram. So check him out, Transparent Knives. You'll see it. So so by the time this thing is done, there will be nothing. Ori oh, what will be original? Just the frame? I mean, Just will it the be frame. A steel frame, are you going to have that replaced with titanium at any point? <laughs> uh, I got uh, micarta scale uh, for it. I got um, 
the frame is going to be original. It's rebladed with a new custom blade. And I got uh, bronze washers because they come with those stupid Teflon plastic yeah, yeah. washers. And um, a new backspacer, you know. It, 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 it just begs the question, like, if you if if eventually everything is replaced, is it still the same knife? Is it still a Pilar? Well, it's like, I guess they say every, I don't know how, how many years, our cells are all replaced. Mm -hmm. I, and I guess we're still the same people, but... Uh, you know, it changes along the way. I guess it evolves, like your like your Pilar. Yeah, it's it's a cheap knife. Who cares, man? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm getting all philosophical. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be cool. That's that's all I could say. It's going to be a really cool uh, Pilar. Probably one of the best ones. I think you'll see. So Ed, Edwin Callow is saying, I own Rotten 25, Sabenza 25. It's a regrind with a spidey hole. And I, I don't know if I've seen yours, Edwin, but I have definitely seen that on Instagram recently. And man, oh, oh, uh, done by Josh. Okay. At Razor's Edge, a Razor Edge. Man, that looks so beautiful with the, uh, the Sabenza with the spidey hole in it. I got to say, man. That was such an uproar when that first got done. Some oh of the purists God. went nuts, like oh, lost course. their freaking minds. Of that. Tell me, tell me, what was the... Oh, they were like, oh, you know, now the blade's going to lose its integrity of its strength and <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff people could think of. And one of my buddies uh, goes by Echo Does Knives. He used to be oh, pretty... Yeah. yeah, he used to be pretty popular on his Instagram. He had one with like a Timascus clip and stuff like that. And people were like battering him every day. I'm like, I messaged him. I'm like, I don't care what they say, man. That's effing cool. That's so reasonable to do, you know. Just oh yeah. Someone. <laughs> and he was like, he was getting a kick out of it. He's like, man, I just love it. The more comments, the better. Yeah, man. Well, that's that's what it's all about. Yeah. So, Alex, uh, and it, you, 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 we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, and anything else you want to say about this last week in knives for you, or? What's coming up? Oh, I can't wait for that dagger, man. That's oh, all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was, so when are you expecting that uh, to arrive at your door? Well, it's uh, officially getting shipped tomorrow. So I don't know. He'll send me tracking tomorrow. And, um, you know, uh, I'll be... I'll be posted like a sniper waiting for the mailman <laughs> until then. <laughs> yeah, and, and and following that tracking number like a like a spy. And calling in sick the day it's supposed to land. <laughs> yeah. No way. Nah, no way. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> All righty, Alex. Well, thanks for coming on the show, man. It's been a pleasure. And uh well, that, that about does it for this inaugural edition of Thursday Night Knives. I want to thank you, Alex, for coming on. Uh, it's been great. And I also want to thank everyone out there for joining in and watching and being a part of the conversation and tuning in. Um, if you haven't yet, please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And uh, just know that all of those little actions actually add up and, and make a big difference. So we really appreciate it. So for Alex of Alex's Knife Box on YouTube and Jim behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying good night and stay cool.